Hey guys, it's Mark here from War Eternal. Uh, 9.3, it's coming out for the NA servers uh, September 25th, which is, as of this recording, tonight, basically. Uh, it's 1 o'clock Pacific. Um, gotta do the math. 1 a.m. Pacific. Anyway, bunch of good stuff in here. Uh, I wanted to go over it. Kind of my first patch video for the channel, but I'm really excited about it. So uh, let's get into it. So, first off, um, basic content. The U.S and Russian and German trees are all getting new light tanks, which is awesome. Uh, the Chaffee, uh, in the USA tree, the Chaffee Tier 5 light tank is getting three new tanks to branch off of it. The T-37, the M-41 Walker Bulldog, and the T-49. I will do tank reviews or tank go-overs of it in a different video. Um, but basically, it's awesome that they're getting light tanks up to tier 8, which is going to be really cool. Uh, you'll notice, if you've played World of Tanks before, that the tier 8 light tank, the T-49, shares the same name as the current tier 5 tank destroyer, the T-49. That tank is getting changed to the T-67, I believe, when we'll see that later on. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, Russians are getting a line off of the MT-25, which is the replacement of the T-50-2. Uh, the LTTB and the T-54 Lightweight. I've heard really good things about the tanks. So I'm really excited to kind of take a look at them uh, once I eventually get there. We'll see. And then Germany, of course, uh, off of the Aufkarlung Panther, which you may also know as the Awful Panzer, uh, or Awful Panther, is getting a new Tier 8, which is the RU-251, which is a stupidly fast tank. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, strongholds, nobody cares. All right. Maps. Moravanka. Moravanka is well known for the Magic Forest. The Magic Forest is gone. Uh, once the patch drops tonight, I will uh, get a replay video and I'll go over the map so we can all get a good look at it. But the basic gist of it is, is they've expanded the city, they've kind of reworked the hill valley side, and then the Magic Forest has totally been reworked. Gonna be awesome. Really excited about it. Also, the map is bigger, which is going to give mediums and light tanks a lot more room to play. And also it's actually going to empower artillery as well. So basically everybody gets empowered except for heavy tanks. But the benefit of the heavy tank is of course that they don't uh, they won't get sh shot as quickly. So you'll be able to do your heavy thing. It's going to be really neat. Uh, and then the landscape on Ruinberg, I don't actually know I don't actually know what they fixed there. I'm sure it was it's probably just some minor stuff. Uh, I'm not worried about that. All right, vehicle characteristics. This is kind of the important stuff here. To start with, the Chaffee, the Tier 5, is fully rebalanced. The Chaffee originally was part of um, kind of the original Tier 5 scouts. There was the Chaffee, there was the VK-2801, and there was the, um, I think the AMX-12T, and the uh, T-50-2. The VK-2801 and the AMX-12T were both bumped up to Tier 6. Um, and they're pretty well balanced for their tier now. The T-50-2 was removed from the game entirely and replaced with the MT-25. And the Chaffee was the only one that was left, so the Chaffee was still broken, basically. That's now getting completely rebalanced. Uh, they're cutting off the top guns. They're changing its top speed, they're changing the turret, it's a totally new tank, so it's not going to play the way the old Chaffee did. Sorry guys. Um, as far as this goes, I don't know what this means. Players who had previously researched the M24 Chaffee get 43,340 experience points for this vehicle. I'm thinking that means that if you got the Chaffee through the M5 Stewart, all the experience that you put into the Chaffee, you're getting back onto the new Chaffee so that you can put it into the T37. I think. I'm not actually sure. If that's the case, great. That's awesome. If it's not, I don't know what people are going to do with 43,000 extra experience on tanks that they don't give a shit about. We'll see. Okay, other new tank. KV-1S. Finally getting fixed. Uh, it's moving to tier 5, as you can see here. Tier changed from 6 to 5. Uh, you're also getting an HD model. Fancy. Uh, and it is now being 
replaced essentially by the KV85. It's a little bit slower. Uh, armor, I think, is about the same. Um, guns are different, so we don't have quite. You still get the big 122, but the gun rapid fire, whateverness, is different. I think we'll see that later on as well. Uh, let's see, M46 patent enhanced suspension module added. I don't know how much that's going to affect people unless it's the grind. Um, I don't have my 46 patent, so I don't know. Maybe you need the suspension in order to mount like guns, turrets kind of thing before you get the tracks. Uh, if that's the case, then that's awesome because spending 200, 300,000 credits so that you don't have to grind through with a stock gun is just a lifesaver. Uh, let's see, the PZSFL5, I can never pronounce the name, but now it's a no more pronounceable name. It's the Sturer Emil, which was the uh, Stubborn Emil is what it's called. It was a, a historical nickname for the tank, basically. So that's kind of cool. Uh, that'll make it unique. Definitely give it a better name over the... Uh, the PZSFL 4C, which is the tier 5 on the same line, which everyone calls the toaster or the flak bus. So it's nice to have a little bit of change there. Uh, let's see, maximum battle level for the M6A2E1 reduced by 1. No, I don't care about that. That's basically uh, a premium tank. Not even, it's not even a premium tank, it's a, like a... God, what was it? Um, if I remember correctly, it's a early beta tester gift tank so that's fine whatever uh increased suspension durability for tier 5 to 8 light tanks that's awesome means that they're not going to get tracked as off often and going quickly over like a drop means you likely won't track yourself which is awesome uh turrets of the t67 us tank destroyer that's currently the t49 uh, are swapped which is interesting it means that the closed turret will now be the lower turret and the open turret will now be the top turret all right, here we go. Some more, what is this? Vehicle characteristic changes. Uh, Yeg Panther. Model is HD, collision model improved, whatever. 3601H, repair cost reduced. Well, you'll make some more money, but the tank is still garbage. It really is. Um, God, when they rebalance the heavy tanks in the German, they really mess things up. I do think that the 3001P is still a better tank. So if you're looking for a tier 6, I mean, it's it's fine, the repair cost, but it's not even the best. It's definitely not top tier in tier 6, and it's not really the best tier 6 German either. It just happens to be a heavy tank, but it's still trash. All right, the FV-304, everyone's favorite artillery to hate. Uh, let's see, traverse speed decreased. Uh, medium train capacity decreased. Traverse speed decreased. Dispersion increased, crossing capacity decreased, uh, aim time increased, reload time increased, dispersion after shot increased, dispersion on gun traverse increased, aim time reload time increased. Alright, so this is all, all of this stuff is basically um, a fairly major nerf to a tank that is defined by a rapid fire artillery shell, basically. Um, if you are low enough tier, or you've never played the game before, the FV-304, as it stands right now, has a fast enough rate of fire so that it can track you permanently forever. And there's nothing you can do about it. I guess this 25-pounder 25, 25 must just be garbage. I haven't played the tank. I don't play a lot of artillery. But... The 25 pounder must just be trash for it to only go up a little bit. But this, the 4.5 inch howitzer is the one that you normally see. And getting an extra second and a half added to its reload time is significant. In addition, we have an aim time increase and a dispersion increase, which means that you won't be able to fire as accurately, as quickly as you otherwise would. It also means that you're not going to be, fire, be able to fire as accurately on the move and a whole host of other things. So, good changes all in all. Alright, United States of America. The Hellcat. Another considered overpowered tier 6. Let's see. 
Dispersion on the move and hull traverse suspension increased. That's a lot of dispersion increased. Uh, it's slower on soft and on all terrain. Um, also another significant, so it's, it's basically much, it's much worse on the move now. That's all this is. Top reverse speed reduced. Um, that's fine. It's just, I mean, that's just something you'll have to deal with. You won't be able to poke as quickly, uh, which was definitely a strong point of the tank. So this will make it, so you have to be more careful with how you dodge in and out of cover. Dispersion increased by 12%, reload time increased by half a second, dispersion increased. All right, so these are all ma pretty, I, mean, I don't know if they would call them significant nerfs, but it's a lot. Half a second reload to the 90 millimeter, dispersion on turret traverse increased. Th this tank is not going to play the same way that it used to. It's not going to be as fast. You're not going to be able to take snapshots on the move. You're not going to be able to stop and take a snapshot really quickly because your dispersion on the move at Hultraverse is already significant. Which means what's going to end up is this is going to be a second line sniper, I think. So this is going to be much more of find a bush, camp in it. Because the camo is still the same, and this thing is excellent camouflage. So this is going to be play more, a lot more as a... Uh, as a camping tank. So you're going to find a nice bush, you're going to sit in it, um, and you're going to shoot people as they go by. And that's all all she wrote. I don't think I don't think it's going to play like the medium like it used to because the mediums are just going to be better now at tier 6. Yeah, like it's got it's got great damage, but I just don't see how it how it compares to the the EZ8 or even the Jumbo in the American line. Yeah, it's it's a, this is actually a big change, much bigger than I had originally thought it was going to be. All right, uh, the M24 Chaffee. This is it's a whole new tank. Uh, you can see right here, like new engines. Uh, it's cheaper, repair costs. Uh, top forward speed is, excuse me, increased. Maximum battle is now tier eight, which is now in line with tier five scouts. So it's now six to eight instead of six to ten like it used to be. Depression angle changed, so it doesn't have as much depression. Reload time goes down a little bit, dispersion down, traverse speed up. Removed the 76, added the 75, so it's going to lose a lot of DPM. Yep, and it lost 130 hit points. Whew. That's a lot. It's going to play totally different. I think it's going to play... It's going to be hard to say. It kind of depends on the camo rating, which I don't see a change of here. If the camo rating didn't change, then it might be all right, but it's going to be hard to say. I think that the tank will be in line with a lot of the Tier 5 lights now, which are not great, but they're okay. Yeah, it's, it, it, we'll see. All right, um, yeah, Chaffee is just totally, it's a totally new tank. I don't know why they, they, they have all this extra stuff. We'll see. It is faster, though, so that's going to be a benefit, at least. You're going to be a lot, a lot faster than the old Chaffee, which maybe will be beneficial. M5 Stewart, faster. Um, on the E3 suspension but not on the E8 suspension. So it's slower. Top forward speed is increased slightly, but you won't hit it very often. View range has gone up a bit. And they got rid of the howitzer, which is the tank, the gun that everybody used, but added this 37 gun T16. I don't know, we'll see. It's gonna, they're, because they're changing the, the, the things, it's gonna be a totally different tank. So we'll see how it plays.
but you're going to be using either the 37 gun m6 or the 37 gun t16 i'm not sure where that falls on the list all right t18 uh everybody's favorite tier 2 tank destroyer to hate let's see slower to turn slower slower to turn slower slower reload increased by a significant amount dispersion increased reload time increased durability decreased this is a pretty major nerf for the t18 it will probably still be overpowered at tier two because the thing that makes the tank overpowered is the fact that this 75 howitzer exists on the tank and can one-shot a lot of tier twos uh, and the fact that it has really good armor for its tier at tier two so i don't think that i mean if this is going to make it a little easier to get around but the problem is is that a lot of players at that tier don't understand that so the tank is still the tank is still going to be broken at tier two so this uh, this is a major nerf and it's not going to change how the tank is affected at all. Uh, all right, T fifty seven heavy tank. Uh, let's see, dispersion on the move increased, dispersion on hull traverse increased, aim time increased, dispersion. This is to bring this more in line with the AMX fifty B, which used to be the auto loader of choice at tier ten, but then the T fifty seven came in and it was a faster reload time, same amount of damage. I think the penetration was slightly less. Uh, and the accuracy was more, so it was basically just a better tank. At least as far as a better gun. So the aim time increase and the dispersion means that you might see more of a balance between 50Bs and T57s in tier 10 and things like Clan Wars. So this is basically Clan Wars change. It doesn't really affect how broken the tank is. Not really broken, just really, really good. Uh, for dropping a burst, because the reload's still the same, so you're just not as accurate at distance, but up close and personal, where the tank is supposed to be good, you're still going to wreck. Uh, T69, cost went up, that's a minor change. T71, cost went up, that's another minor change. These are both probably driven by the new light tanks, would be my guess. Uh, T92. Um... It's faster. And it's more accurate. Hmm. I don't think this tank really needed a buff. I don't understand why they buffed the T92. Uh, it basically makes the tank more accurate and faster. But it's artillery. I... The tank's already popular. It's one of the most popular ones in Clan Wars. It's incredibly popular at Tier 10. Uh, this is only going to make it more popular. I don't see this being a good thing. This is... Yeah. Unless they're trying to challenge the Bat Chat 58. But the Bat Chat 15558 is... is an, it's just... It doesn't have... It's it's a totally different kind of tank. You know, it's your four-shot autoloader. You're low damage. This thing hits like a truck. And now it's more accurate. I don't know. Uh, we talked about the M6, maximum battle reduced life by one, that's fine, whatever. M3 Lee, minor adjustments, uh, cool. Okay, USSR. The IS. Aim time increased, reload time increased significantly in the 100 millimeter. Uh, this 100 millimeter changes, I think, is because that 100 millimeter is the same gun. I'm guessing it's the same gun that the, uh, the KV-85 is getting. And so they've, because they've buffed it, this is just a buff for the KV-85. Um, oh, hold on. Uh, 100mm C-34. So, yeah, it's got to be, it must be a buff in relation to this then. Because there's no other reason to do this. Um, the gun was fine as it was. This just makes it better. Uh, ISC 152, minor adjustments. KV1, research costs decreased for, I think this is the turret, maybe? 
I'm not sure. It's been a while since I played my KV-1. Now, uh, the KV-1S branches into two vehicles now. Okay, this doesn't... Hold on. KV-1S branches out into two vehicles. KV-1S Tier 5 and KV-85 Tier 6. Doesn't make any sense. The KV-1S I know goes into the KV-85. I guess maybe the KV-1S branches into the KV-1? Maybe that's what they meant to say? So you can go KV-1S into KV-1 from the T-28, I'm assuming. So you can go T-28 into KV-1S into KV-1 or T-28 into KV-1 into whatever. But maybe the KV-1 doesn't go into the KV-1S. But does maybe go into the KV-85? I don't know. I'd have to look at a tech tree. Um, I guess here, let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see, you know, 9.3 USSR tech tree, world of tanks. All right, and let's see what we have here. Nope, that's not 9.3. That's German. Um, I don't know if I'm going to fly. That's more German. I don't care about German. I want the Russian one. Okay, this is all 9.2. Uh, I'll have to come get back to you on like that. Uh, or you'll find out, I guess, when it gets here, but... I'm assuming that the T-28 is going to go into the KV-1 and the KV-1S. And then the KV-1S will go into the KV-85. And the KV-1 will go into the T-150. And the KV-13, I guess? Because I know that the MT-25 changed. The MT-25 now comes out of the T-34, rather than from the KV-1S. I don't know. Okay, let's move on. Uh, armor protection is the same, but better dynamics, which is a fuzzy term that doesn't mean anything. Top speed is lower. That's fine. It's a heavy tank. Uh, the 122 is slower now, so it doesn't fire as fast, but the penetration... I think it's not as accurate, but the penetration and the damage are the same. Um, this 100 millimeter is going to be just god on this thing. It's like... An eight something second reload, super fast. Gonna be great on this tank. Uh, let's see. Uh, the gun depression is considerably lower on the KV 85. So, for those of you who enjoy the KV 1S for being able to poke over a hill and shoot somebody and then run away, you don't get to do that anymore in the KV 85. It plays a lot more like a standard heavy tank with zero gun depression. It sucks, I know. But that's life, right? All right, what do we got next? Object 430, tier 10. Um, reload decreased. Dispersion reduced. Dispersion increased. So this is to make the tank more mobile than I would assume. Uh, this, so this just makes it fire, I mean, obviously it's to faster fire rate, which is for the 430. Uh, this here essentially be, ends up being a wash. Uh, total dispersion is increased, so it's not as accurate, but because your turret traverse is reduced, then as you circle somebody in your tank, you're going to do a lot better. All right, T-34, uh, don't care. IS-7, don't care. Transmission, this is in my mind the biggest if not uh, probably the second biggest change in this patch i think the map change for malinovka was the first one not malinovka um God, what's it called let me scroll up here and find it um Motovanka. i i'm terrible with it so the the map change with Motovanka to get rid of the magic forest was massive this is another massive one this list Awesome. Transmission of the following vehicles will not be set on fire when hit by a shell. This was the biggest weakness for German tanks out there. Tiger 1, Tiger 2, Panther 2, Lova, Jag Panther 2, Jag Tiger, Waffenträger, Alf Panzerfeuer, uh, VK4502B, 
E75, E50, Jag, Tiger, Waffentrager, Alf E100, VK7201K, that's a uh, Clan Wars reward tank, Mouse, Jag Prez E100, E100. All of these tanks are now way better than they used to be. Because one of the problems with playing these tanks was that if someone shot you in your lower plate and hit your transmission, they could set you on fire. Which is kind of a glaring weakness for being shot from the front. Well, that doesn't happen anymore, which is awesome. Uh, the 263 I don't really care about, the T28, whatever, Type 61 STA1. The, uh, it's not as big of a buff for these because these tanks don't have any armor. So they're going to get shot anywhere. These are all fairly heavily armored tanks. So you're going to see the lower Glacius shot a lot more. Um, the same with the Death Star. It's not that big a thing. Just It's a huge buff to the German tanks. I'm really excited about that. And then this just goes back into the light tank durability suspension increased. Which is straight across the board. I like that with the, the light tanks. Uh, it's going to make them much more mobile and much less likely to just be tracked off of just a shot being taken. Because once, I mean, if you're tracked in the middle of the open and if you're making a run or something, you're dead. So this way, you won't be dead quite as quickly. All right, gameplay. Awards from the Battle Heroes category can now be obtained by multiple players. That's whatever. Um, a set of easily obtainable awards. If I, I looked at these a little bit, these are basically all, like, accumulation awards, like the Lion of Sinai, which is... Uh, kill a bunch of ISs, or... No, that's Hunter. I don't remember. Anyway, there's a bunch of... You know, Hunter is the patent one. It doesn't matter. The important part is is that um, they're just stuff that you will eventually get over the course of playing. They don't require you to be an amazing player that gets 20 kills in a match, even though there's only 15 guys. Right? This is just something that will happen as you play. So just play the game, enjoy yourself, and all of these awards will eventually end up in your reward list so nothing to worry about there uh added bonus to experience with rewards vehicle non-penetration ricochet i had heard that they removed it because it was broken i'm surprised to see it in the patch notes here i they had some problems with it if they fixed it great but the last i had seen they had actually not they removed it and they weren't sure. So I don't know if this is in or not. So take this with a great assault. Uh, shell ricochet is cool. Means you can actually ricochet off a tank and hit another tank and do damage. Uh, I got rid of a couple of historical battles stuff. Um, they lowered the high values for Mark of Excellence by I think 8% each across the board. Um, this is cool. If you track a dude when he's underwater and he drowns, congratulations, you killed him. <laughs> That's, I'm not, I'm sure that only happens a handful of times to any of us ever. But if it does, cool. Good job. Uh, let's see. Added disciplinary penalties for the following instances of unsportsmanlike conduct. In action in battle, exiting the battle before the vehicle is destroyed in self-destruction. If I remember correctly, this is basically like a tick kind of thing. If you do it once, whatever, you'll be okay. If you do it twice, they flag your account. And if you do it three or more times, then what ends up happening is, is you can go to a battle, that's fine. But if you do it again, then you don't gain any money or experience. Which means you, I mean, you don't lose any experience, but you don't gain any experience, and all the money that you spent on your tank, whether it's repairs or, um, you know, shells or equipment or who knows what, yeah, that still is deducted, but you don't gain any money. So you could actually theoretically lose a ton of money if you were like tier eight, nine, ten, and you, you know, quit the battle or win AFK or who knows what. Uh, fixed stuttering when playing some facts, that's fine. Alright, graphics. Uh, new HD tank models, woo! Uh, things blow up, that's handy. Uh, we talked about 8 to 10 transmissions, fires. Ricochet tra tracers are cool. Uh, fix them, that's fine. Uh, exhaust, that's fine. 
uh, penetration marks, that would be nice because sometimes I get shot in the mantlet and I'm like, hey, that should never have gone through and turns out maybe it didn't actually go through there. Hmm. Anything else? Uh, this was really interesting. There was actually a giant hole in the model <laughs> that you could theoretically shoot through. That's done. That's nice that it fixed that. Uh, following effects of vehicle destruction overhauled and expanded. So this is just um, your tank will do different things depending on what happens, basically. Fix some visual models. That's fine. Just as long as they keep updating it. Tracers again. I think they had that one twice, right? Improve the effect of tracers upon ricochet. Improve the effect of tracers of ricochet. Nice. I'm glad they uh, <laughs> they decided to input it twice, just with one having the 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 word the in it, and one is on and one is upon. Well done, wargaming. Um, sound. Uh, that's just that's when so when you're scoped in, the sound is different. Whatever. Uh, interface. The design on the top panel has changed. I've seen it. It looks nice. Connection quality is good. I like that. Uh, that'll be especially useful in like EU. Um, in North America, it's not that big of a deal, at least if you live in North America. Well, I know. I guess it's a big part of the middle of the country that it'll, it'll be affected depending on whether you want to play NA West or NA East. So I guess that's alright. Uh, chat panel and garage we worked. That's cool. Uh, I like this. This is really clean. I mean, it makes the game look really nice. Um, statistics for penetrations after ricochets, because you can do that now. Cool, cool. And then other bug fest changes. Memory leaks, crashes. This. Oh, God. <laughs> I've run into this problem so many times. Fix an issue when player cannot file a complaint on an ally with recent inaction slash bot in battle results window. I've wanted to do this a number of times because there's still a lot of bots out there. Let me see what else. That's about it. So, um, that's basically it. We got some major, major nerfs coming to some tanks that are considered overpowered. Uh, a bunch of new tanks that are coming in. I'm very excited about. It's gonna really change the way tier seven, eight, and seven, eight, nine, and ten are played, which is awesome. I'm very excited about that. Adding light tanks to that um, is is really good. It really adds a different dynamic that I think is going to really change the game and having just a couple of light tanks that could scout and and you can get light tank wolf packs and you can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Going to be great. All right, guys. Uh, uh, when the patch drops, I'll try and get an overview of the new Motovanka uh, map out. But until then, keep tanking, guys. It's going to be awesome. We'll see you guys out there.